After months away, John Marston has returned to his loved ones. While trying to rebuild his ranch and win back the trust of his family, Marston awaits whatever life will throw at him. As he drives home one evening from an errand, he ponders whether a man can ever escape his past. He is a man who is ready for anything. Almost anything. <laughs> Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say, damn this awful son I've raised with his highfalutin ways and his shame that his mother swears like a sailor and sews like a blind man. Uh, is that better? Your lordship. Much better, mother dearest. Oh, good. I'm so glad, my darling. When you've finished your university education and are far too good to even acknowledge my existence when we pass on the street, and you gently kick me aside and beg an old crow out of the way with your highly polished boot. Well, think of me kindly at least, will you, my son? I'll try to, Mother. I'll think, that woman I just kicked, that used to be my dear old potty mouth mom. Maybe I should bother to kick her harder. <laughs> dear boy. Oh, I am so proud of you. Get off. Now, father's here. Maybe he can beat some sense into you. Something funny's going on out there. Damn dogs gone crazy and wolves howling and birds flying. Well, it's just the storm, John. Maybe. Uncle make it back yet? I thought he was with you off drinking in the fields. I mean working, as you call it now. Uh, he went into town a few hours ago after we busted that hammer working out in the meadow. Well, he's probably holed up in some place of ill repute waiting for the passing of the storm. I hope so. Well, that old man could take care of himself. I know. Just a funny feeling I got. You gone psychic, Paul? Either that or I ate something funny. Knowing your mother's cooking, seems more than likely. Mm. Well, talking about food, who's ready for some poisoning? <laughs> Me, my darling. I am starving. What you reading? Just some book about monsters. Tell me about it. It's kind of dumb. That should suit me just fine. Well, it's all about, in ancient times, how Aztec warriors worshipped the sun. But during full moons, some of them worshipped the moon instead. And upset the equilibrium of things. So anyway, w what it involves is, there's this one guy, and he goes out to search of his... him all alone. So anyways, since there ain't no cure, the brave man has to kill everybody, which is absolutely disgusting and completely unbelievable. <laughs> it's getting late. Guess we're not going to see uncle till morning. Come on then, Abigail. <sighs> Jack, get yourself to bed, boy. Try to get some sleep. Ain't you worried about uncle? Sure, but he'll have to wait till morning just like any other man would in his shoes. Good night, son. Don't stay up reading too late.
okay, old man? You don't look so good. What is going on? What the hell is wrong with you? Get my gun. Poor bastard, I... Well... You okay, darling? You okay? Oh. Abigail. Abigail. I don't feel so great. Jack! Get out here! Now! Oh, good Lord, what's happened? Mama? Careful, boy. Mama. Stay right there, the pair of them. Don't make me no widower now. I'll remind you how to behave. into you sick crazy bastards or what I've done to you but I'm going to get help stay calm as calm as you can seeing as both of you seem to have gotten a little excited probably just a fever Jack be kind to your mother Abigail teach the boy right from wrong both of you stop biting chunks out of people be back as soon as I can <laughs> I best go find me a doctor in town.
Where the hell is everyone? Professor, what are you doing here? I thought you went back to Yale. Well, I did, but uh, I came back uh, for another round of research, <laughs> and now all hell is quite literally broken loose. What is going on? Well, well sir, I'm a man of science, a man of great learning, a, a thinker, a, a wise man, and I'll be honest with you, sir, I haven't got a fucking clue. Why ain't that dandy? What, what should we do? Well, I suggest we try to find other survivors, band together, and find a cure. Or fight to the death trying. Well, that sounds great and all, but, uh, but I'm uh, just peachy. But, but I'm not sure that I'm, I'm not cut out for such shenanigans. Uh, I was thinking more that uh, finding a horse and, and riding back to the civilized north at the speed of knots before writing a paper on the events from the comfort of my study. I'm a scientist, after all, right? I mean, I, I, I can't do much science if I'm some bloodshot dervish's lunch, can I? Much as I would like. Your sense of duty is very impressive, Professor. <laughs> I'm gonna search the back street for survivors. No, no, no. Perhaps staying with you would be safer. Uh, could, could you just wait a sec here, would you please? I, I'm going to wander down that lonely, deserted street and get my bag. Wait. You should stay with me, Professor. You haven't got a gun. Oh, no, no, it's okay. There's no need to worry. Everyone's already dead. <laughs> I left my stuff with Mr. Nastas. You remember him. Indian fellow, dumb as bricks, but, but a good sort. Okay. Well, meet me in a couple minutes. Affirmative. A couple of minutes. <sighs> Anyone here? Hello? Anyone here? In here, mister. Come out. It's okay. Come out. I don't bite. Bad joke. I mean, come out. They got my family, mister. And mine, I fear. I'm sorry. We were so glad to see my mom. Because she's been dead for three years from the smallpox. Your mama was dead? I saw her walk up onto the porch. And then boom! She ate my daddy. You weren't... You weren't a bad man, mister. You weren't... Sure... He liked to drink, but, but he weren't bad. And, sure, he liked the company of women, but he weren't bad, mister, he weren't. No one deserves to have their blood drunk. I mean, he knew how to use his fist. And if, if a woman spoke out her place, he reminded her of it and everything. And when my mama was dying, people said that he was lying with her sister, but that weren't true, mister, it weren't. But you said your mother was dead. Yeah, her and Mr. Braithwaite. He's been dead a year. And then yesterday, he walked up that street eating dogs. 
And he loves animals! All the dead folk have come back to life, mister. Only they ain't happy. It's a funny kind of salvation. All the dead folk? All the folk buried at the cemetery over by the churchyard. My God. I'm gonna go have a look. You wanna come? I already seen my mama. I don't need to see any more of my relatives. Here, mister. Take this. If you can burn them, maybe you can put their souls to rest. Hey, mister! If you see my uncle Mordecai, burn him. Burn him real good, you hear?
Folks okay? Oh, just fantastic. I just saw my daughter get eaten by some creature sent straight from hell. Thanks for asking. I'm kind of sorry I did. Sorry, mister. Forgive my wife. We've suffered terribly. What's going on? Well, it's the government's fault. Ain't it always? Well, they let in too many foreigners. Just shut the goddamn border or things like this happen. My daughter was just some satanic demon's lunch because of the goddamn government. And I pay my taxes. Well, usually. I think we may be moving a little off topic here. I ain't a wise man, but I have done a little traveling. These creatures ain't like any foreigners I've ever seen. Thanks for the input, cowpoke. Oh, I got flesh-eating monsters feasting on my family, and I'm taking advice about tolerance from a gunslinger. Oh, what in the world has my life come to? And my daddy told me I never should have gotten married. This is all your fault, you, you useless man. Oh, not now, Toreen. Not this again. <laughs> your daddy was a, a bully and a drunk. Well, you ain't no kind of man. <sighs> Listen, <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt your happy reminiscences. Is there anything I can do to help? You got any idea of how we can survive? But you could try shooting them creatures, you dumb fool. Ma'am, it's been a real pleasure. Sir, you're a man of great patience. See? That fella ain't hiding away like a little girl who's wet herself. I thought we agreed we should stick together. <laughs> so we're just gonna stay up here till we either starve or have to eat each other? What do you want me to do? I ain't God. <laughs> that surely you ain't. Oh, you're as useless as a poor car. Hey, you one of them, mister? Do I look like one of them? Well, don't come no closer. We made that mistake before, lost half our number. I ain't one of them, you fool. Well, how do I know? They can't speak. Well, I ain't taking no chances. Kill him, he's one of them! Yeah. No, I ain't. Don't take no chances, Silas. Have it your way, all right? Listen, I ain't coming no closer. Do you know what's going on? It's the glass eye. The freak with a glass eye, he caused this. No, 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 it's the snake oil man. These poor folks have been drugged. I blame the Mexicans. They haven't been struck down. All right, we heard a lot of stories, mister. Some say it's a moon, some say it's drugs. Hey, don't come no closer now, stand back. Apparently it's worse in New Austin. Must be where it came from. And it looks like I'm headed down to New Austin. Did one of you say snake oil? It's the glass eye. I blame the Mexicans. Oh. Connie McTavish, you don't know nothing. You always was an ignorant shrew. I bet your husband's glad he's dead. <gasps> well, at least my husband never took favors from the stargazers, Lucille Billingsgate. You say you're sorry, you hillbilly white trash. Yeah, yeah, now how are we gonna rebuild America like this? Well, see, I thought we had it all decided. We was gonna be kind and gentle and pay homage to our leader. Who happens to be me? Sounds like you folks have this all worked out. Have yourself a fine America. And good luck. We never had that decided. We decided we would hold elections and that I would be leader. You can't even read! Well, I, I got gravity! Well, I mean, gravy. I mean, uh, folk respect me. I am the new king, Archibald Andrews. Me! Now pay her! <laughs> Sometimes I think I've been drugged. <laughs> 